Hey guys, uh, today I'm going to talk about changing colors uh, in as many walls as you need to without actually having to go back to the wall tool and changing individual colors. So I've got my default tray up here and I'm just going to pin it. And you'll notice that we've got this uh, salmon color. Well, on my screen it shows salmon color. And I want to try and change as many walls as I can in one go. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my materials here and I'm going to go select. All right select and then I'm going to choose the material sample paint and I'm going to go to edit and what I can do is I can actually choose uh, a different so my color wheel would obviously change as many colors as I want to you notice I'm changing a lot there I've missed a couple uh, and if you do it and you don't like the color like that I'm going to go control Z and I'm going to undo it control Z right now I could also choose a probably more accurate way of doing this and that would be by going here and changing uh, the, the material uh, according to uh, whether RGB or HLS or whatever it's going to be. I'm just going to leave it at that. My skill set doesn't lie with colours as you can see. Alright, uh, so I can do that and you'll notice that I did miss a couple here so I'm just going to go and select that as well. And what I'm going to do to actually make it match the color instead of me trying to remember these numbers, I can simply just go here and go match color object in model. All right, and now you can see that it's done it all. And you can see there's one more there. So select here, edit, and match color in model. All right, and there's one more there you can see. And look, I mean, it's pretty repetitive. Okay, so there's that, and then there's also the timber. So the timber color that's in here, I might want to change all of that as well. So I can go in here and go again, select, edit, and I might just want to back it off a touch in color or, or make it lighter or whatever it's going to be. And you can see that that's all happening the same. The takeoff is still counting it as the material that's required, and you'll see very shortly there's some great updates for being able to um, quantify these different material choices. You'll also notice we can do it with textures as well. It's slightly different, but I'm going to show you how to do it. So I'm going to select this texture here, and I'm going to go in here, I'm going to go edit, and I'm going to tick off use textured image, and then I'm going to go down, I'm going to find a textured image in my uh, library here, which I'm going to open, and you can see it looks a little bit small. So what I can do is I can simply just type a one in front of it and I can increase the size of the texture. Now you might want to stretch the texture out of, uh, you know, parallel or uniform. All right, and you can see what happened there. I, I don't really think it's too much, but basically it means you can stretch it, it laterally or vertically, horizontally or vertically, and you can do that pretty easy. All right. Oops, invalid length. If you leave a space in between a length, that's going to happen. Backspace there. And you can see I stretched it that way. All right. Okay. So I'm pretty happy with that. Now, how else could what else could you do to this model to make it maybe a little bit more um, presentable to a client? There's a couple of things you could actually, uh, if we go into styles and we went into edge settings here, we can turn our edges off, and now you kind of get an edge-free setting. Or we could turn our edges back on, but we could make them the same color as the material. So by material. Okay, and therefore all of my edges are actually as per the material uh, that's been selected there and you could go and turn your profiles on if you wanted to and just to outline, change the, the thickness of your profiles and you can just show your model however you want to according to these settings here. Have a bit of a play around with these different settings. There's one last thing that I'm going to show you is sky. I'm going to add some sky in there and we might want to edit the color of the sky to here and then probably shadows as well if I'm going to turn my shadows on here um, you'll notice that I have my shadow in there but it's actually projecting a shadow on the ground I actually don't want it to project on the ground so I'm just going to go down here and I'm going to turn on ground off and I might also in my uh, scenes I might actually turn my axes off all right and then when you're happy with that scene and I might just go back and quickly just turn my profiles off Right, when you're happy with the way that it looks, you can turn your, your fog and everything else on. Basically what you can do is you just go up to here and go update style with changes. Right, and that way every time I click on structure off, it's going to remember the way that I've got that scene to, uh, to show. Uh, and if I wanted to go back to my elevations, because these have been created with Pluspec, it'll remember the scene that's associated with them very, very quickly. 
Hope it helps, guys. Cheers.